control the budget and make sure that ministers are well controlled even when they are traveling I make sure that I approve their traveling and I even approve the amount of money they will spend. You know any ex expenditure outside, you know, the budget itself? Even what is in the budget, I have to approve it. Extra budgetary expenditure, it must be absolutely necessary. And if there is any foreign exchange allocation, even from the ministry, I have to make sure that that extra budget or that expenses, it has to go through the autonomous, especially if I know it's not in the public interest. If any ministry is undertaking in this budget project that is of <laughs> not, not of public interest, it goes to autonomous, like any other private you know, enterprise and so on. And so many, even the dedicated account, which used to be the issue, which used to be the question, we bring it back. It's part of the budget, I said today. So we have to take necessary steps to put our own house in order. Third quarter, 1998, July to September, presidential election. First October, 1998, swearing in of new elected president and final disengagement. Fellow Nigerians, this administration has demonstrated a will to make the hard decisions. Only those detractors who deliberately persist in a blinkered view of us and our efforts, efforts fail to take account of all that we have achieved in short, short a time. I sincerely appeal to the international community for support in our endeavors. This administration does not shy away from well-meaning advice on political, economic, and financial matters. We are prepared to listen, but if having listened, we make our decisions, we expect our true friends to concede that right to us. Our country is vital for trade and investment. We have not despaired that some of our traditional friends who have not always given us their support will yet bring themselves to admit that they may have been wrong after all. I can only refer them to favorable comments and assessment which international financial institutions and our creditors are freely giving out to the world. Influence, um, all these morals are really um, dropping and I feel very saddened by it and I hope I will all try to bring back our useful culture so that our girls I will go to school, they, they learn all whatever they want, they wish to study in school, and they still come back as our own daughters, as Nigerian girls, as African girls, and they grow up into being responsible African women, and not some, some, some culture that is very degrading to womanhood, uh, something that is uh, debasing the, the, the womanhood something that belittles you and um, something that you do without actually knowing the consequence of the actions and, and, and it's, it's very it's very negative in somebody's life later. So I believe that we should all go out and teach ourselves that um, um, we, we want to be ourselves and we want to be proud of who we are and what we are and that is the most important thing. Become instrument or tool of, you know, foreign, you see, propaganda, foreign, you see, machine to undermine and subvert the unity, the stability, you see, of the nation. We are aware that some of the press, those, the daily media and even the magazines in this country are being financed from outside with the sole objective of misinforming the world you know, outside Nigeria, you know, of happenings here. You know, they tell all sorts of lies, all sorts of distorted, you know, facts and so on. In most cases, not necessarily for internal consumption, but for external consumption. We have, you know, information, you know, to that effect. Every Nigerian is a very hardworking person. He's a very honest person. 
is a very enterprising person and also is a very proud person. The Nigerian you find that asset today, amongst all the Africans, Nigerians are the largest outside Nigeria itself, outside Nigeria, well, anywhere in the African continent or outside the African continent. If you go to Europe, in any of the countries in Europe, maybe except France, for obvious colonial reasons, you may find that in all other places there are more Nigerians than other Africans. In all these other countries, whether it is in other parts of Europe, in England, in United States, in South America, in Asia, and so on. And within the African continent, also, you go to any African country, you find that there are more Nigerians than other nationals in that country. And they are there, they are pursuing their legitimate, you see, interest. And they are doing very well, very enterprising in trade, in commerce in all other aspects. That is the average Nigeria. Value on oil is a main source. Out of our whole, whole earnings as a nation, 65% of our earnings as a nation goes into recurrent, that is payment of salaries and the running of you know, administration, both a state and federal. 65% of our earnings. 30% of our earnings as a nation goes into paying debt. And what is the balance? 5%. So it's only 5% goes into development. What do you achieve? So there must be discipline, there must be physical discipline, whether it is on the monetary aspect of it, the people themselves have to be reoriented. We are a disciplined society in this nation. There's no doubt about it. The Supreme National Government is hereby dissolved. A provisional ruling council is hereby established. It will comprise the head of state, commander in chief of the armed forces of the Federal Republic of Nigeria as chairman, the chief of general staff as vice chairman, the honorable minister of defense, the Chief of Defense Staff, Service Chiefs, the Inspector General of Police, the Attorney General and Minister of Justice, the Internal Affairs Minister, the Foreign Affairs Minister, and the National Security Advisor. Legislative powers will reside in the Council. Fellow Nigerians, the events of the past month, starting from the announcement of the June 12 presidential election, culminating in the appointment of the former head of state chief Anna Shanekan are well known to you. The economic downturn has undoubtedly been aggravated by the ongoing political crisis. We require a well thought out and permanent solution to these problems if we are to emerge stronger from them. Consequently, a constitutional conference with full constituent powers will be established soon to determine the future constitutional structure of Nigeria. The Constitutional Conference will also recommend the method of forming parties which will lead to the ultimate recognition of political parties formed by the people. General Abacha's administration accepted the national demand for a constitutional conference. Conference has submitted its report with a draft constitution already approved by the head of state and commander in chief of the armed forces of Nigeria, who on October 1, 1995, announced a new transition program. Fellow Nigerians, in order to properly address these issues and to establish the foundation of a durable democracy, we estimate that the time required will cover a period 
no more than 36 months. A detailed and carefully considered program of the sequence of events that will lead to that deadline has been worked out. This sequence will begin with a stage-by-stage -stage phase handing over at the local government level. It has been calculated that a completion date at the level of the presidency when the final tier of a democratically elected civil government shall be installed shall be feasible for 1st October 1998. Second quarter, 1998, April to June, National Assembly elections, primaries to select candidates for presidential elections, commencement of nationwide campaign for the presidential elections, third quarter, 1998, July to September, presidential election. 1st October 1998, swearing in of new elected president and final disengagement. Fellow Nigerians, this administration has demonstrated a will to make the hard decisions. Only those detractors who deliberately persist in a blinkered view of us and our efforts, efforts fail to take account of all that we have achieved in short, short a time. I sincerely appeal to the international community for support in our endeavors. This administration does not shy away from well-meaning advice on political, economic, and financial matters. We are prepared to listen, but if we have been listened, we make our decisions, we expect our true friends to concede that right to us. The journey to democracy has begun in earnest and with full determination. Certain claims made about the Nigerian society are either based on misinformation or they derive from insincere motives. And most of them challenge the well-known social histories of virtually all the modern industrialized nations of the world, whether Britain, France, Germany, the United States, or Japan. It took these countries centuries to emerge as strong economic powers and to produce viable liberal democratic institutions. To suggest, therefore, that a nation can go through the transition to modernity in a hurry and without pains is to indulge in self-deception. Nowhere in the world has democracy and industrialization been achieved without perseverance and without suffering. They want to see the establishment of democracy. They want to see uh, the Nigerian military unfold their transition program so that they can be held uh, to their promise in terms of timetable, etc. I feel that Nigeria has been able to fight some of the battles that took other nations over a hundred years to fight. Within a very short period of time, we've dealt with the conflicts of ethnicity, we've dealt with the conflicts of regionalism, we've dealt with the conflicts of religion, we've dealt with all kinds of conflicts. And I can feel that there's a sense in which these are going to serve as a means of inoculating us, so to say. So that, because I believe that if we had not fought a war in this country, the, the events of June 12 would probably have led us to a war. But because we've crossed that bridge, Nigerians feel more confident that they can ex explore other alternatives. Nations like Yugoslavia, who, that may have existed for all this period of time, never dealt with the problem of ethnicity. And that was why when the problem knocked on their door, they couldn't contain it. The first thing to do is that you become, number one, very clear-headed about all this and refuse to be diverted by anybody. Uh, refuse, I believe, as General Sani Abacha has done to be taken off course by salacious journalism, which again is part of the manifestations of our weakness. Uh, refuse to be cowed by external manipulations or attempted uh, menticide against you. And uh, know exactly what you got to do and accept it and do it who have our own laws and regulations. And what has happened in Nigeria very often, those who fall foul of our laws normally hide behind human rights abuse 
uh, to try to malign the government for taking action to enforce such laws. And of course, the other countries who, in any case, apply the same uh, laws in similar circumstances are just too ready and willing to take such inputs from our citizens and try to make a big issue out of it, as if they uh, do not exercise the same constraint. I think that's exactly the case about Nigeria. But I can assure you, uh, judging by any standard, especially our continent, African standard, even uh, to European countries, I don't think any of them can boast of any better human rights record than us here in Nigeria. Uh, some example perhaps will help. Uh, take the situation of the British and the Northern Ireland crisis. Incidentally, I trained in Sandhurst, and we had a lot of exercise and, and access to a lot of the materials and methods used there by the British forces. We have not used even 100 of those techniques here in Nigeria in ensuring that law and order are brought under control in Afghanistan. So uh, certainly these are just cheap propaganda uh, by people who, in any case, have no respect for facts and the truth. The elements within the political class that they refer to as the conservatives, we have not been responsible for inviting the military. And uh, the so-called quote-unquote progressives, by own admission, said that they invited, uh, they invited Shoneka because they were not prepared to allow Shoneka to settle down and to see what he can do to resolve the crisis at hand at that point and move the country forward. So they were not ready to accommodate Shoneka for six months. Now they have to deal with the military regime for another five years, and yet they are also complaining. They do everything that they do the opposite of whatever they tell us to do. And this is why Nigerian leaders must stop listening to what they say, not only in the public media, but even the so-called textbooks which they have sent to our schools. And begin to look at the person who is talking to you. What, how do they do this? If they tell you this is the way to solve this problem, look at them, is that the way they are solving it? If they tell you this is the correct way to develop politically, socially, or economically, look at them, is that the way they themselves are doing it in their own country? I think this is the only way to go forward. Nigeria, much of the problems have no root in our national psyche. They are not in our character. We are committed. We are sincere, and we will do everything possible. But you know exactly what we went through in this nation. You know the basis and the reason why, even in 1992, about uh, how many, is it 13 or 23, presidential aspirants had to be disqualified. And we knew exactly what happened in 1993 when you know, the, the, what happened when even the election had to be cancelled and so on. So what we have done is to take necessary, you see, measures to ensure that some of these, you know, incidents are avoided. But at the same time, the transition program is for the nation, but the major players in the transition program are the politicians themselves. So the politicians themselves will have to come and bury their differences. Will have to play politics the way it is, not politics of animosity, not politics of religious or ethnic, you know, sentiments or anything. No matter how devastating to the unity and stability of the nation, once it favors that individual politician, he is ready to exploit it at the expense and at the cost of the unity or stability of the nation. So what we have done is clear, it's simple, it's straightforward. And it's step by step. But I tell you, we know we are all Nigerians. The politicians themselves, is going, it's a big challenge on them. They need a change of attitude, a change of mind for them to come and play responsible politics. And that's why even as far as rotation is concerned, as far as power sharing is concerned, which is the main issue in the politics of this country, we took the pain to go into detail and divide this nation into six. So the question of majority, the question of minority is absolutely immaterial. It's a question of quality. It's a question of the individual, individual Nigerian, who possesses the right leadership 
who possesses the right quality. That is the issue. So the question of marginalization is completely out of it, is absolutely addressed. So there is no section of this country that will claim to be marginalized as far as the present system is concerned. So the issue of marginalization is out. The issue of sharing or involvement in, in, in power in this nation is out. And all these things we took upon account of our past experiences as far as the political evolution of this nation is concerned. And we believe and we pray what we have done is something which is enduring, which will reinforce the peace, the stability, the unity, and the understanding of this nation, and which will form the basis of a stronger, a sounder democratic system for this nation. Drugs. Nigeria does not grow them on the farms. Nigeria does not manufacture them uh, in, the, in, the, uh, in the factories. And Nigeria does not export them. Maybe there are people who bring drugs from one place and pass through Nigeria. Those of them who are lucky to go through, uh, they get away with it. Those who are not lucky, they get arrested and they face our tribunals here. But the worst offender in drug consumption is the United States of America. The Americans know where these drugs are being produced, particularly in Latin America. They know who is producing them. They even know the factories and the farms and the individuals who produce these drugs. They know the channels of transporting these drugs from Latin America right to the United States of America. It is therefore uncharitable, unfair for the United States to say that Nigeria is responsible for drug trafficking to the United States, as if Nigeria is a producer or manufacturer or exporter of drugs. I mean, you cannot deny that uh, there are some Nigerians who engage in the business of trafficking in drugs. Nobody denies that. But there are American students who are engaging in the business of drugs. And there are more Americans engaging in business of drugs than any group of people in, in the whole world. The media is a powerful organ. And the... And met this gentleman, a professor. This gentleman told him that um, he knew why we were out. We wanted to get support and sympathy for Nigeria and to explain the federal cause to the international community. And he explained that um, the international community was not particularly interested in Nigeria as such. All that people were interested in were our resources. And he even went further to say, if we could get robots to exploit your resources for us to develop our economies, we wouldn't mind the whole lot of you being eliminated. But, he said, in the case of Nigeria, there is a difference. And the difference is that Nigerians are very hardworking and very intelligent and they have got resources most of which they know next to nothing about if this country nigeria with all these resources both human and material was to have an uninterrupted period of 20 years of peace and stability it would be another japan because these intelligent hard-working nigerians would come to know about their resources they would use their intelligence and work hard and exploit those resources and develop their economy. A developing economy needs a market, he said. In our own case, you have no problem with the market. Your population is large enough to provide the market that you need. And even without that, the Nigerian market is the entire West African region and beyond. So you will have no problem with the market. Therefore, if you are given an uninterrupted period of 20 years of peace and stability, you would become another Japan, you would threaten our economy, you would be a thorn in our flesh. That was the view of this professor in 1967. And he therefore ended by saying that even after the Civil War, we will not allow you to rest. We will create one problem after another for you. 
Knowing this, therefore, I feel that in spite of our shortcomings, which I must admit we have, there is a kind of orchestrated campaign against Nigeria so that it may not emerge the economic giant that it, it, it is destined to be.